Hey everybody, Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. I'm joined by Nate Wells. You know him from the Uncharted series, but we're here on Underworld Ascendant, bringing back Ultima-style classic gameplay, which is great. I'm trying to. Yeah, which is great. It's, you know, classic RPG, first person. This is a game that, uh, the series that kind of put Warren Spector on the map. He's involved in this, but Nate, I want to, let's walk us through the look of, of you know, recreating this and or, really bringing it into the 21st sure. century modern, sure. modern look. Well, I mean, the first thing when uh, Paul brought me on board was, uh, like, how do you sequelize a game that's 20 years old? Yeah. Right? Like, you have to simultaneously honor it, but, you know, not ape it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, um, between a rock and a hard place, effectively. It is. <laughs> and so the, the place I ended up, actually, was... I went back to all the first edition Dungeons and Dragons manuals. Yeah. Right? Which were sort of unprofessionally made. Yeah. You know, if you remember them, you know, the monster drawings were not that great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the depictions of dungeons were not that great. Um, and then that led me naturally to uh, miniatures. Interesting. Right? And, and the miniature gaming. Yeah. Um, I noticed actually somebody has a stand over here where they're doing like a full miniature thing. <laughs> great um, so then I got the idea because I'm working with a remote team um, to actually create sort of a periodic table huh, of the game in actual clay so you know here we have all, like all the different sort of treatments that we do in the world a series of rules effectively to govern the <laughs> yeah. look of the game yeah well I, I I mean, the point of the uh, sort of authorship idea <laughs> is that you see the artist's hand in the work. Yeah. I think that with, uh, you know, the advent of uh, Mudbox and ZBrush, like, there's been this real attempt to be as photoreal as you could possibly be. Yeah. Right? And I don't know exactly why. <laughs> so it doesn't serve every, every so game, right? Especially can, not this one. Right. So you can see that this brick is that brick, right? Yeah, you've made you've made small. I made physical, this in my kitchen. You're not seeing it because we're, we're seeing gameplay, but yeah, you've made right, right, small right, right. physical samples of the samples. textures yeah, and, the, and exactly. the materials. How do we treat wood? How do we treat stone? How do we treat metal? Yeah. You know, all those sort of different things. And. Um, I wanted it to evoke that handcrafted nature of miniature, where when you miniaturize something, you're forced, and if you look at the skeleton, he's actually based on like a 1980s era <laughs> skeleton nice. miniature. Well played. Yeah. Is that you have to lose some detail, right? You have to like distill things back yeah. to, you know, their sort of essential elements as those essential elements pile on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> after which, being after which, and you, and you look at his rib cage, he has four ribs, not, you know, <laughs> to not 14 ribs. Moving through the castle here. I mean, uh, I love the lighting looks great. It's very, it definitely looks like a torch lit area, mm -hmm. which is exactly what it should look like. Right. So here you can see, I think really, Joe, you don't want to go over there. Yeah, look at the door. I mean, yeah, you're holding your you're holding your go. wood door physical sample in your hand and yes. holding it up next to this in-game door we're seeing, and they're they're virtually it's virtually they're exact. virtually identical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the point is uh, it, it, you know it solves two problems at once. One is uh, connecting with a remote team. Yeah, I'm able to send these through the mail. If I need to. <laughs> right. Um, Every one of my artists lives in a different American city. Interesting. So, um, you know, part of it is sort of the, the logistics of, of making a, uh, you know, a project like that where with you... A, with a unified look, with, when you with don't a unified have look, a, we have a remote team. Yeah. Right? So this becomes essentially the kind of scriptural thing that we can always go back to. Yeah. And sometimes sense. I send it, sometimes I just send photos. But so far, all the artists have gotten it. Yeah. Right? So they can work independently now, largely. That has to minimize the stress on your part, too, from not having to, you know, yeah. correct 
content. Also, I love to make these things. <laughs> so. Still moving through the... Uh, now this is just, is this a sort of just a sample, <laughs> almost a sandbox as it were, just sort of a test area? Ah, uh, this beginning area, yes. Obviously we're seeing very pre-alpha gameplay, these are all tested. So Tim, maybe you want to address what's happening here. Yeah, what you, I mean, what you saw there was Joe was, uh, you know, he, he wanted to get through this, this door, um, and there was a, a nearby torch, uh, so he, he actually used that barrel to transfer the, the fire from the torch to the door, right? But, picking up the barrel uh, and lighting it on fire. Uh, this has the disadvantage that while he was carrying the barrel, he, he himself was burning. Um, so I think I think in a second, we're gonna see him take advantage of, of the uh, the new rune that he just picked up to be able to create fire uh, without actually carrying burn, burning barrels around with him. Um, but, you know, that that's, and here, we're, you know, we're seeing another spell like, um, where uh, he's you know, using a, uh, using the rune language that we've implemented to move those uh, coffin lids around, right? Um, I don't know how much we want to get into this at this point, but, you know, uh, one of the things that players really liked about the original Ultima, Ultima Underworld was the way that the uh, the runic magic system really described a language of magic. Um, but uh, it was really just, it was only in in the, the choice of runes that we that we made for different spells, uh, it wasn't like it wasn't like there was actually like a language there. Um, whereas in this game there is, right? We're actually we're actually doing some some interpretation of the little rune phrases that you put together. Uh, so for example, back there, uh, you know, if he uh, he used the uh, the Ewa's rune, which signifies travel, uh, and uh, the the uh, the uh, what's it Iwas, I think signifies uh, earth. Um, and so when he when he casts a spell based on those two runes, like he knows that something earthen is going to move, but what exactly happens depends on the context of what's in front of him, right? Like the spell itself, uh, under the hood, there's this sort of like simple expert system, right? So the spell searches for relevant looking earthen objects in the scene and moves them in the way that seems to be the right way. So like first it pulled the coffin lid towards him, but then he recasts and is like, oh, oh, he must not have wanted it pulled towards it. I'm going to push it away instead, right? Um, so there's this whole layer of interpretation and contextual uh, meaning in the magic system there. So we're getting back, uh, we're moving to some obviously more exotic uh, artistic locations here, more sure. uh, organic ones mm -hmm. with the, the magma and the, the, the uh, mushrooms on you know, sort of organic growth right. coming out of the walls, the stalactites and cavern system here. Mm -hmm. so, Again, you, you definitely, there will be literal dungeons, it seems, in this game. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really, I mean, it's kind of a love letter to, you know, 1980s fantasy. Yeah. And that's my hope. I hope, I hope that's the way people feel about it. Um, of course, not everybody's as old as me, so. <laughs> but everybody, I mean, hey, high, fa high fantasy is in these days, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it ever went out, I don't think it ever did. Right. Playing with finding more runes. Take one last look around this area here. But just this, yeah, this is visually a good idea of what we can expect from oh, yeah. Underworld Ascendant. Yeah. And uh, we can expect great stuff. Much more to come on Underworld Ascendant right here on IGN. Thank you, Nate. This is a very Thank cool you, early look at uh, what this new Underworld game is going to look like. Mm -hmm. For more on everything out of PAX East, keep it tuned right here to IGN.